Again, welcome to Impact on Ministry. Amen. I'm here to tell you that we have some exciting news for you today because there are ministers and there are pastors, there are prophets, there are prophetess, there are apostles all over this country that's doing great things. And so many of us don't even know about them. But this is going to give you, this program will give you a chance, amen, to be introduced to some of these ministries. And I'm so glad today that I have such a one that I'm interviewing all the way from the West Coast. And that's none other than Lisa, Pastor Lisa Gibson. Pastor, how are you today? I, I'm well, Pastor. How are you? Oh, we're blessed. We're blessed. I'm so glad to have you here uh, via a man, a Zoom here in Detroit in the studio at Impact Television Network. Hallelujah. Would you tell us a little bit, uh, first of all, give us your name and the name of your ministry. Um, I am the senior pastor of Sovereign Shepherd, um, which was founded by myself um, through the Holy Spirit. I was given instruction to um, start a ministry during a time, very difficult time, when my husband was uh, suffering through heart failure. He had had 10 heart attacks and the Lord had given me uh, dreams over three nights and instructed me to start a ministry. And so here we are, amen. All right, so but professionally, um, you know, what were you doing before you started your ministry? Uh, I, I have been a licensed optician for almost 29, 30 years and uh, worked for a very large ophthalmological practice in San Francisco. And I really loved what I did. I was an optical manager, um, which kind of is ironic that the Lord allowed me to have uh, the access to um, work with people to give them a uh, physical sight. But what I didn't realize is that the Lord really wanted me to give them spiritual sight at the same time. Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm impressed by, you know, doing a little background on your ministry. And I'm so glad that you're here on the impact uh, today because you'll be able to share people, share with people some of the things that I'm learning about your ministry. And I know that it's going to be an impact to others who can connect to your ministry and uh, your journey. I look at your journey, uh, how you were raised at about uh, five years old. Uh, you were in uh, you were raised in a Catholic uh, background. Yes, sir. Um, absolutely. I came from, my family is from Louisiana, and uh, my, my father is Creole, my mother is African American, and the Catholic religion was really deeply rooted in the Louisiana culture. And so I grew up in uh, the Catholic uh, religion, and I went to Catholic school. But when I got uh, maybe around the fifth grade, I started to uh, pick up the Bible on my own, and I started realizing some of the things that I was actually reading, and the, the, the text didn't align up with what we were practicing in the church, and I was very conflicted, and I, I was a very curious child, and I asked a lot of questions, and um, at the age of four, I actually had had an encounter where Jesus literally came into my bedroom, um, during a, a domestic violence situation and I was very afraid and I, I remember my grandmother always telling me, baby, if you ever get afraid, you call on that one name and his name is Jesus and it doesn't matter where you are, he will show up. And uh, again, I was about four, four years old, I believe I was, and he literally walked in my room, sat on my bed and held me in my arms, uh, his arms, and I fell asleep. I suppressed that memory till I was almost 35 years old. And one day I was ministering to someone and the Lord brought back that memory. And I was just, wow, I, I didn't realize that Jesus had been, you know, uh, working with me from a youth. You so know, you, you, he ordained me a prophet from my mother's womb and here I am 
So you're saying that you broke away from religion and God began to reveal to you different things, amen, yes. when it comes to the Bible, comes to the gospel, how to live as far as Jesus' ministry is concerning and how to operate in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, we have about eight minutes left in this interview, but we got a lot to cover. And I want to cover the part, it's a process, it's a process. You had some, uh, uh, some tragedy, the things that happened in your life. Tell us a little bit about that. Give us about three minutes of that. Amen. Um, I had three biological children and all three of my children were victims of gun violence. My youngest son was shot multiple times and in the process of him fighting for his life, I prostrated myself on the, the, the nasty, you know, public general hospital. And I told God if he would save my son, I would, I would give him my life. And I didn't know I was actually going into covenant with him. Um, Shortly thereafter, I ended up uh, moving out of the city we were in into uh, where we live now in Antioch, California, and I began attending a Christian uh, church, and immediately I was, I was hit with the power of the Holy Spirit, and I knew that I was, I was born again. I was revived and ready for whatever God had for me. Well, praise God. And so that experience when you when you joined this ministry that was working in the gifts and the fivefold ministry and the power of God was being, you know, exhibited, it caused you to have that hunger and thirst. It was like a wake up call in your in your life. Now, yeah. you, you, you know, you operate in the gifts and, you know, I've heard, you know, talking to you uh, some good stories about how God had given you different things to do. That's unorthodox. And that's what I love about that. I love that when people step out on faith in the things that God has called them to do. And you were telling me about the signs and wonders and miracles that happened in your ministry. Tell us about it. Um, the Lord had me put together a women's retreat and he asked me to cover each woman with a tallit and to anoint them and to pray over them. And as I began to pray, he, I heard the Holy Spirit very clearly. He, he literally speaks to me and he says, blow in their face. And when I blew on them, they were immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. Women who had never spoken tongues began speaking in tongues. Some of the women that were standing up, just they, they fell out uh, uh, on, the, on the floor and I didn't have a clue what was happening. And I didn't understand that the glory of God was in that room and it was a fire. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me, I've given you my fire and I want you to touch and lay hands and heal sick people. And I, I, I can't even uh, count how many miracles the Lord has allowed me to partake in through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the, there was a man who was over 500 pounds who went to visit him in the hospital and I laid hands on him and he was in a coma and I said, you will live and not die. Your heart will recover. You will come about this coma. You, will, you are going to lose this weight and you will walk again and you will live again. Within the next 24 hours, he was up and on his feet. Praise and God. The people that he knew that something happened to him. Well, and he didn't understand it. Praise God. You know, God has given you a supernatural miracle. And I want people to understand that if you want to get in touch with this woman of God, you see the number at the bottom of the screen. I want you to get in touch with her. Amen. Because do you have a prayer line, uh, Pastor? Uh, yes. I have a, a phone uh, number that they can reach. And yeah. leave prayer requests. It, uh, may I give it? Oh, yeah, we'll have it. It's at the bottom of the screen. It'll be at yeah. the bottom of the screen. But because uh, yeah, there are sir. people who need a prophetic word. Because you, you, you move in prophecy too, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So if somebody out there wanting to get in contact with your ministry and they wanted to speak to you personally or they want to yeah. speak to one of your prayer team, um, are they available? I mean, are you available to talk to people? Yes, sir. I, I'm fully ready for God's people. I am available and I am welcoming anyone who wants to really be met with the power of God. This is the season. You are more than welcome to contact me and I will be uh, happy to pray with you, uh, give you a prophetic word uh, and let the Lord's perfect will be done. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, you know, we're excited about that. And we got about maybe two and a half minutes. And I want you to share with the people uh, an overview of what they will receive 
by faith, if they contact you, amen, what can they experience? You told me about the miracle of the man losing weight. You're talking about the miracles of blowing on the tallits. You talk about the miracle of the power of God that's on your life. So if I wanted to get in contact with you, what, what has God done and what is God doing in your life that will, that will lift me up? Well, currently, um, the amazing thing about the Holy Spirit is that I have spoken to people over the phone and actually have uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit has allowed people to be delivered. Um, people who have been demonically plagued, um, they have, uh, I've had people over the phone who've been touched. There was a woman about two days ago, we prayed over the phone and she hadn't heard out of her ear for maybe you know, a few months and I prayed and I, I, I asked the Holy Spirit to open her eardrum up and she started uh, rejoicing and saying there was fluid coming out of her ear. Um, the, the, the prophetic words of women who have been desiring children and I prayed for their wombs and, and they have now birthed children. Um, I have my own husband, you know, he had 10 heart attacks in one night. I laid hands on him and he survived and you know, uh, just there, God has just been doing an incredible thing with our ministry. We are a very small ministry in California and people who come into the house of God immediately, they all uh, say that they feel the power of God in that place. And when they come up for prayer, they're met with the Holy Spirit. They're touched by the Holy Spirit and they do not leave that house without being touched by the power of God. And that is my focus in this season. There is a fire, a wild fire that God is releasing over the body of Christ and over the, 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 the ones that are desiring to learn him. And he wants to activate and raise up a new generation of men and women of God and those prophets that have been in the closet. He is calling them for such a time as this. And I know that he is preparing the hearts and he is, he is drawing out the, 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 the traditional way of how church business has been done. And we are getting ready to go into a very ortho, unorthodox way of how things are gonna happen. And the Lord said that this is gonna be a quick season. As Wait. soon as you speak it, it will be done. The manifestations are going to be incredible. It's going to be bigger than the Azusa Street Revival. Pat. This is going to be such a mighty move of God. He is moving. It Pat. is the season, Pat. and God has been waiting for a people who were hungry. Pastor we Lisa, Pastor Lisa, we want to thank you. Our time has run out. I mean, that's thank powerful. You. I love your spirit, and I encourage you all, amen, get in contact with this ministry, because I believe that God's going to touch you when you when you call this woman of God. God bless you again, and we love you. God we thank God you. for your time. Amen. God bless you, Apostle.